Are we going to bet our own eternal future on a false prophet? This silence spoke volumes to me. I knew I was into something really deep. I grew up in Morocco. I come from a religious family. My grandfather was a rabbi, so was his father and grandfather. He was less and less comfortable for Jews to live in Muslim countries. Going to school and coming out, and there were some young Muslims waiting for us with sticks, and we had to fight our way home. I remember uh, my father used to say, uh, if you forget you're a Jew, they will remind you. I was 13 years old when we moved to Montreal. And it was when I was in college that my friends had a special interest in Eastern religion, I remember, and also in prophecies. And I remember one of my friends was going into Nostradamus prophecies. And I said, don't do that. Why would you go to Eastern religion? We have Daniel, Ezekiel. Why should we go to see other prophets? And they said, okay, fine. So what did they say? And I said, well, I don't know. I'll find out. For the sake of my friends, I went to in inquire. I went to see my father and I said, do you know about the prophets? Did they see anything about our times? And my father said, no, I don't know. I said, did your father leave anything? Did he ever tell you something? Did he leave any books? And my father said, yes. And so he brought me uh, three beautiful books. Uh, great, but they were cedars, you know, there's nothing there. About a week later, there were people who came to the college and they set up a book table. I picked up the first book and I turned it around and it said what the Hebrew prophets say about the end time prophecies. I looked at the table and it was a Christian table. They were evangelists and I saw the name of Christ. I saw crosses. If I'd seen this before, maybe I wouldn't have gone there. How can they know about my own book better than me, better than my father? So I took the book. I would see from the corner of my eyes the name of Jesus. I will skip over it. I associated the name of Jesus to anti-Semitism. And I was dumbfounded about the preciseness and the importance of prophecies in the scriptures. We have the prophecy of Moses in the Torah. We have the prophecies of David in the Ketubim. This is when the writer spoke about uh, the Messiah. He mentioned Isaiah 53. Ah, oh, that did it. How uh, I was so touched by, by, by the clearness of the words in there. I couldn't believe it. It is so concise, so descriptive, the hero dies. And not only that, the hero was led as a lamb to the slaughter and he didn't open his mouth. That was him. One who comes perfect with no sins to come and die for us. And this is what Isaiah 53 says. I recognized him. This is when I accepted the Lord Yeshua as my personal savior. I saw him there. I met my God. I've never felt as Jewish as I did then. My brother uh, brought me to see one of the chief rabbi in Montreal. And uh, right away he says to me, you know, the Messiah doesn't die. I said to him, but you know, I just read in the Talmud that, you know, the Messiah dies in Sanhedrin 98b. He went and he opened up his, his book and he saw it. And he went around the table once and he came back and he said to me, he says, uh, this is one opinion. But we go, as, as Sephardims, we go with what Maimonides, the Rambam, says. And the Rambam says very clearly that Jesus is not the Messiah and, and that the Messiah doesn't die. So I said to him, I said, do you consider the Rambam a prophet? And he says, yes, from Moses to Moses, Moses Maimonides and Moses from the scriptures. And I said, but you know, uh, Maimonides gave a prophecy that didn't come about. Are we going to bet our own eternal future on a false prophet? It didn't go well. He got very angry, of course. He banged on the table uh, and he said, you're lying, he says. He never said that. I found a book in French where Maimonides writes to Rabbi al fuhami in Yemen and where he gives that, that prophecy and I brought it to him. Uh, and he said to me, he says, there are mysteries that I don't understand. And he gave me back the book. I knew I was into something really deep, really great.
You know, in rabbinical Judaism, uh, the idea of Messiah is so broad. You know, depending who you ask, you'll get a different answer. You, we know, uh, you know, that when you take two Jews, you get three opinions. When you get to the Messiah, you get maybe 10 opinions. The reason why they came up with two Messiahs, Messiah ben David and Messiah ben Yosef, is because they couldn't put the two comings of the Messiah together. They do not go by what the scripture says. When you go to the Torah, when you go to the Tanakh, the idea, the concept of the Messiah is clear. You know, Yeshua said it in, in Yohanan 546. He says, if they knew Moses, they would know me. If you stay within the scriptures, and if you stay within the Torah, within the Nevi'im, the Ketubim, you will find Yeshua. He is right there. He's waiting for you in the scriptures.